And welcome to Desk of Lady Ada. Okay. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another Desk of Lady Ada. This Lady Ada is going to be flippy floppy, upside downy, because we're going to do the great search first. Yeah. And then we're going to talk about why we have this item for the great search. And we're going to show you a video that we made. That's why we're broadcasting late tonight, because we wanted to film it, but there was no way to really do it live at the same time. So the end of Desk of Lady Ada will have a pre-recorded video where we show you something that we... Uh, fixed and then you can also see it in action okay okay all right take it away lady Anna. okay all right so um do you want to do the great search intro or you want to oh do yeah right yeah let's do that let's do the great search intro since um we're doing great search first yes right where in the world is that part i need the great search with dj king Okay, the great search brought to you by DigiKey and Ada Fruit every single week. Lady Ada uses our power of engineering to help you as you find the things you're looking for. And today we're going to be solving a problem that a lot of parents have. Broken kids stuff. Um, so I will show the video afterwards, but um, I was debugging and analyzing why um, a little bumper car that uh, baby Ada likes to ride around in was no longer working. Turns out... Um, the battery charger that was provided was for 24 volt batteries and the battery itself is a 12 volt battery and so um the battery got damaged so you can look on the overhead yeah let's check this out so uh um, danger i mean well it's not danger and it's a lot of acid they're very um rugged they're kind of designed to put up with anything but you can see the deformation here um, almost certainly caused by, again, that overvolting. You know, it, it'll, it'll put up with a lot, but after like two years, it eventually just like gave up the ghost. Um, so the good news is that, you know, we didn't have to replace the full bumper car uh, toy, which would have been like, you know, like I think 100, 150 bucks. Instead, we can just replace this battery, which is $20, and then put this in the proper recycling. Better yet, if you have one of these, just like don't use the charger if it's 24 volt. Use a 12 volt charger. I don't like... It's not like it saves any money for them to give you a 24 volt charger. I mean, it's like just a just a cock up. Anyways, um, so we need to get a new one of these because I, you know, these are sealed. I'm not going to pop it open and fix it, and um, it's no longer holding a charge. It has like 10 volts on it. Um, so we want 12 volts. It's about four and a half amp hour, um, and the size is about three and a half by four by two and three quarters, 2.75. 2.75 by three and a half by four. So let's find a 12 volt lead acid battery. Thankfully, DigiKey has a ton of different batteries. It's one of the things that they have a lot of. Let's go to the DigiKey site and we'll find a drop-in replacement. Uh, ideally, we'll even find one with the spade connector so we can just just snap it right in as usual. Okay, so to the computer. And we can look for, uh, can search for lead acid battery. And there's a whole category called rechargeable. There's also battery packs, which I think we covered on a previous toy that we fixed, which was the um, robotic dinosaur. Uh, I'm just going to actually click on the whole category just so we can, you know, and, and not just have lead acid so you can see all the different batteries that are available. So as usual, we're going to search for active and we're only going to search for stuff in stock. And I'm going to exclude marketplace because I only want it, things that are shipping from DigiKey. To be fair, a lot of batteries, especially like special custom batteries, are shipped to the marketplace. So it's like DigiKey doesn't necessarily stock them, but they will arrange for shipment from uh, the supplier direct. Next. Battery chemistry, as we mentioned, it's a lead acid. There's a couple different kinds. There's sealed less lead acids, lead acid. So this is the chemistry. We don't want lithium or nickel metal hydride. Uh, some toys might have those, but not this one. Next up, voltage rated. Um, 12 volts, that's the, you know, we looked on the overhead, we saw it says 12 volts. Some lead acid batteries are six. These tend to be 12 though, that's the most common. And lastly, there's sizing, but my mistake was, I was like, oh, okay, like I'll pick the size. But because there's like the, the width the width and length, you know, it can be back, forward, whatever. I actually found it's better to do the capacity next. So this one has a capacity of 4.5 amp hour, which doesn't exist here. So what I did is I just said, well, 
plus or minus one amp hour because the physical size and the capacity are like loosely related. Like you're not going to find this with half the capacity or double most likely, but it will be plus or minus 20%. That's not unusual. So we're going to select those. It's like, it's definitely not going to be like 210 amp hour. And now I only have 12 uh, left, which is really great. Uh, and they all look, you know, they're looking pretty good. Like this one is obviously too narrow. It's, I've seen this size battery used in some cases. It's like a, it's a slimmer version. This is the cubic one. What I kind of like is that there is sort of a standard-ish size for lead acid batteries. So you don't have to, it's not like um, lithium polymer, um, like the pouch batteries, which are like totally unique for each size. It's like, you know, I was helping someone replace a lithium polymer battery. And I was like, there isn't one that's exactly that same size. You can get kind of close, but it's never identical. Um, hard case batteries tend to use the same, they use similar cases. So let's look at the options. So yeah, there's the three and a half by 2.75 by four. And then this one, which is just like a little bit bigger, but we'll, we'll select that one too. And then these two are six inch. These are the long, they're six inch by two and a half by two and a half. So those are like more rectangular. So we only want uh, these two options which is about nine, which is not bad. And yeah, these are all, these will all do the job. Um, what are the differences? I mean, they have maybe slightly different, they have different spade connects. Maybe let's try to pick one of the same spade contacts. Let's go to the overhead again. And think to measure the spades because it looks like there's different sizes. So this is a, whoop, quarter inch. 2.25 inch. So back to the uh, computer. So let's pick one with a uh, spade to uh, 0.25 inch. Six options. I mean, some are much significantly more expensive. It could be that it has like better temperature management. I don't, I don't know why this one is so much more expensive. Maybe it has better quality like anodes or something. Let's just go by price. Looks like by price, I can get one. This was a little bit weird that it was like you could, it was half the price. I'm trying to figure out why that is. There's alternative stock, but um, it's a little unclear. Like maybe it's used, maybe it's like returned. So you could get like a return, like, you know, it's new, but like something that was returned, maybe you can't go back in inventory for $13, which is a deal. Or if you want to have one new in box, $22. Great deal. So for 20 bucks and you know, a couple of dollars shipping, you can get postal shipping if you don't want to spend too much or UPS ground shipping for like six, six, seven, 99 or something. Uh, get a replacement battery. And um, once the battery comes in, we install it and uh, it works just fine. Then our, our kid's toy is back up and running. So good to know. You need lead acid batteries. I'll say when you're doing projects, especially projects that are going to be like outdoors or, you know, with people who aren't experts, you know, every Burning Man project I ever did where you need a lot of power, you want to be able to charge it from solar, from DC, from whatever, and it just puts up with it. Lead acid batteries are great for robotics. If you can, if you can handle the weight or if you don't care about the weight, uh, lead acid batteries are just, they're still awesome. They're so rugged and they just put up with any, anything you can throw at them, which is, um, I think that's why they use them for this kid's toy. Cause it's like, who cares if it weighs, you know, five pounds, uh, the, you know, the kid that goes on top of it, it's already 30 pounds. So, you know, it's, it's already carrying a heavy thing and cost is more important and durability is more important. So yeah, I mean, if this was a lithium ion battery pack, this would have caught on fire. So glad that they didn't use that. They could let us instead. And this is my pick, the PS1250 from PowerSonic. Uh, I did actually pick up one of these. Works great. It's logged right in. Uh, a perfect lead acid battery replacement. And it even had a little bit more capacity, five amp hours instead of four and a half. It's my pick for the great search. All right. And that's the great search. And instead of just going to the... Uh outro graphics and all that. What we're going to do is we're going to play the video of us replacing it, and then we're going to uh, bounce. So you can ask questions in the chat and everything, but this is our um, conclusion of the exciting uh, replace thing project for our kiddo. Take it away, previous us.
Today it's going to be engineering a baby toy. <laughs> Uh, so we everybody have, have these, they all break, they all end up in the landfill. We're going to show how to fix it. Right. Okay. So we got this bumper buddy, which is great because when baby Ada was young, we strap him in, you have the safety harness on and you can drive her around and she like really loved it. And now, um, it's been like almost two years since we got it and it's no longer turning on and it's like, I charged it and I'll show you what it's doing and then how I debugged and analyzed the situation. So um, when you press the button, it'll turn on. It's gonna, normally it would turn on, it would do this vroom vroom sound and then it starts playing music and then you can control it. But what happens now is I do this and then it goes into this like weird reboot loop. And um, actually what it was doing before is I had it turn on and it would get to the music, but then the motors weren't turned on. Or if I tried to move the motors using the controls, um, it would like just hang and stop working. And I was like, I'm charging it. And I thought like maybe the motor controller died. And I was like, I'm getting ready to do the motor control stuff. But I was like, well, let me just like see what's going on inside. Cause sometimes it's just a loose wire, right? And that's like the easiest type of stuff to fix. So I use my handy fest tool. I already removed some of these screws to make things fast. So, you know, you would normally unscrew this and then um, there are screws here. Just pretend that you unscrewed it all um, and you lost the screws. And, you know, one thing I noticed is there's this battery. So I was like, well, let's check the battery. And I have to find my multimeter, which of course I already lost because I put it down on my desk. That's how you know we don't script these things. Okay. Um, so using my handy multimeter and this here. I probed this and I was getting like not great voltage, like 10, maybe 11 volts, which is not like bad, but if you remember this says 12 volts on it. And so I was like, well, maybe I'll unplug the battery. Maybe the battery is dead or died or something, right? It's like gut damage. So you remove the battery plugs. And what I like is it's a lead acid battery. So this is a 12 amp, four and a half amp hour battery. So it's it's heavy, um, but what's nice about these is they're fairly safe. Unlike lithium ion batteries um, or lithium polymer batteries, they're a lot cheaper, but they also uh, don't explode and catch on fire. And then um, I have my bench top supply here. And just to sort of like test things out, I connected it up just to see like, you know, is it the battery? Like, cause if I replace this with a constant voltage of 12 volts and you can do like almost four amps or whatever, and this works, then I know that that is fine. You know, you wanna like just figure out like where's the failure. So um, set it to the blue, dial in 12 volts, and now it's got 12 volts in and then I turn it on. And this time it goes through the whole, incredibly annoying sound. And then, oh, this has the, uh, hold on. Once I turn the safety off, you know, this moves. So I know that actually everything was working and the battery wasn't. And I was like, oh man, you know, like what happened with the battery, you know, charging system? And that's when I noticed, cause I was looking at the battery that you see this lumpiness here and this is what happens when the battery is, is not charged correctly or isn't cared for correctly. And I was like, well, you know, I've been like trickle charging it, you know, pretty consistently and I've been taking good care of it. And I looked at the power supply that this came with and this came with a 24 volt power supply. And I'm not going to do the test again because it's, it's tacky to do so. But basically this voltage that was entering here wasn't getting regulated down to like 12 or 14 volts. It was 24 volts was charging this battery, which is like a big, big no-no. You should not charge a 12 volt battery with 24 volts. In fact, it even says on the battery, which is kind of nice, charge it no more than at 15 volts. It's a, it's a 12 volt nominal battery, but you charge it at 15 volts. So 10 is like kind of at the low end. It's probably not supplying any current either because there's probably a whole bunch of like oxygenation and failure. To get rid of this, we'll have to um, take it to the local recycling center. Do not put these in the trash because it's like lead. Um, but there is one in New York that we'll take it to. And then I picked up from DigiKey, uh, which I work with, but they also do have just everything in stock. 
a new battery. And I'll do a great search on how I found the battery. But it was like 18 bucks. It showed up here in two days. So, you know, and I know it's a good quality. So let's open this up. Oof. And it came nicely packaged with like protection stuff on it. Okay, so this is equivalent size. Turns out that this is actually kind of a standard size. Um, and this is also 12 volt, 5 amp hour or 4.5 amp hour. So it's exactly the same, same size. And then I can drop this in. And for 20 bucks, it's like you can basically have a fixed setup. It's that easy. It's that easy. Oops. Have that turned off. And then um, you'll screw this back in. Don't forget this little protector clip here. And put this on. And then you don't need this power supply anymore. I'll turn this off. And then we're back in business. So that's it. That's how easy it is to fix. You don't need any tools other than like a screwdriver type thing. And you don't need a soldering iron. Um, the multimeter is handy, but basically if you have one of these and it's not working after a few months or years, open it up, look at the battery, see if it's like poofy. If you have a multimeter, check the um, terminals to see if it's, if it's not at 12 volts. And make sure you're not charging it with a 24 volt power supply. That's not the right thing to use. What you should be using is um, a 12 to 15 volt power supply. So I happen to have one here. This is a 13 volt, two amp, and that's fine. Um, I noticed that the charging circuit, like it doesn't show that it's full, but it's, it totally will fill the battery. Anything that 12 to 15 is fine. Don't go higher than that because these batteries are very forgiving, um, unlike some of my exes, but they will eventually fail. Also like some of my exes. So that's it. That's how to fix your bumper buddy some citizen engineering, making babies happy uh, here at the Adafruit household.